Hello and welcome to the Computer Vault podcast, where we discuss the history of computers, computing and IT. I'm Aidan and today's episode is the start of a mini-series on the first versions of Microsoft Windows. But there will be no Microsoft Windows without MS-DOS. So that's what we're going to talk about for this episode. If you're listening on Mixcloud, I'll be playing some music too. And episodes without music are available on all the mainstream podcast streaming platforms. MS-DOS is a personal computer operating system created by Microsoft and stands for Microsoft Disk Operating System. It was the primary operating system for IBM compatible personal computers during the 1980s and early 1990s. Its key features included a command line interface or CLI. MS-DOS operates through a text-based interface where users input commands to manage files and run applications. MS-DOS uses a file allocation table FAT file system which organizes and manages files on a disk and programs and software. It can run executable programs, .exe and .com files, and supports batch files to execute a series of commands. MS-DOS was developed in 1980, originally written by Tim Patterson, at Seattle Computer Products as 86DOS, also known as Quick and Dirty Operating System, and Microsoft acquired the rights to 86DOS in 1981 for use on IBM PCs and renamed it MS-DOS. IBM also licensed and re-released it in 1981 too as PC-DOS 1.0 for use in its own PCs. Although MS-DOS and PC-DOS were initially developed in parallel by Microsoft and IBM, the two products diverged after 12 years in 1993 with recognisable differences in compatibility, syntax and capabilities. Initially, MS-DOS was targeted at Intel 8086 processors running on computer hardware using floppy disks to store and access not only the operating system, but application software and user data as well. Progressive version releases delivered support for other mass storage media in ever greater sizes and formats, along with added feature support for newer processors and rapidly involving computer architectures. MS-DOS laid the groundwork for later operating systems, including Windows, which initially ran as a graphical interface on top of MS-DOS. It was also the key product in Microsoft development from a programming language company to a diverse software development organization, providing the company with essential revenue and marketing resources. On microprocessors based on the Intel 8086 and 8088 processors, including the IBM PC and clones, the initial competition to the PC-DOS MS-DOS line came from Digital Research, whose CPM operating system had inspired MS-DOS. Digital Research released CPM 86 a few months after MS-DOS, and it was offered as an alternative to MS-DOS and Microsoft licensing requirements, but at a higher price. Microsoft licensed or released versions of MS-DOS under different names like Lifeboat Associates Software Bus 86, SB-DOS, Compact-DOS, NCR-DOS or Z-DOS before it eventually enforced the MS-DOS name for all versions except the IBM one, which was originally called IBM Personal Computer DOS, later shortened to IBM PC-DOS. In 1981, MS-DOS 1.0 was released which marked the beginning of its widespread use. 1982 was MS-DOS 2.0, introduced support for hard disk drives and subdirectories. In 1983, MS-DOS 3.0 added support for larger disk capacities and file sharing. In 1984, MS-DOS 4.0 was released, which included enhancements like improved memory management and support for extended memory. 1991 released Microsoft DOS 5.0, featuring the MS-DOS editor and QBASIC. 1994 was MS-DOS 6.22, the final standalone version of MS-DOS which included disk compression utilities. Then, in 1995, Windows 95 was released, incorporating MS-DOS 7.0 but moving towards a graphical user interface. In 2000, MS-DOS 8.0 was included with Windows ME, or Millennium Edition, 
marking the end of MS-DOS as a standalone operating system. And then finally, in 2008, Microsoft officially ended support for MS-DOS with the release of Windows XP Embedded. Even though MS-DOS is no longer a standalone operating system, its command line interface and batch processing capabilities are still present in modern Windows systems through tools like Command Prompt and PowerShell. MS-DOS played a crucial role in Microsoft's rise as a software giant and laid the foundation for future Windows operating systems. The success of MS-DOS can be attributed to several key factors including strategic business decisions, technical advantages and market conditions. IBM was a major player in the computing industry. When IBM chose MS-DOS as the operating system for its IBM PC in 1981, it gave Microsoft a significant boost in credibility and market reach. IBM PCs were quickly adopted by businesses and consumers leading to the widespread use of MS-DOS. Unlike most software vendors at the time, Microsoft retained the rights to MS-DOS and licensed it to multiple PC manufacturers. This allowed MS-DOS to become the standard operating system for IBM compatible PCs which flooded the market. MS-DOS was compatible with a wide range of hardware making it versatile choice for PC manufacturers. MS-DOS was relatively simple and straightforward which made it easier for users to understand and use compared to other operating systems at the time. The success of MS-DOS led to a large ecosystem of software applications developed specifically for it. This further reinforced its position as the dominant operating system. And Microsoft provided a friendly environment for third-party developers which encouraged the creation of a wide range of software tools and applications. MS-DOS was released at a time when personal computing was on the rise. The, the demand for affordable and user-friendly operating systems was high and MS-DOS met this need. Businesses began adopting PCs for office use and MS-DOS became the operating system of choice for many of them, leading to its widespread acceptance in the corporate world. Microsoft continually improved MS-DOS, releasing new versions with added features and enhanced capabilities, which helped maintain its relevance and usability. The transition from MS-DOS to Windows allowed Microsoft to retain its user base while providing a more modern graphical user interface. At the time, there were a few strong competitors. CPM was a significant competitor initially, but failed to secure the same level of adoption as MS-DOS. Once MS-DOS gained a foothold, it became difficult for other operating systems to compete due to the established user base and software ecosystem. Microsoft's growing reputation as a software company also contributed to the success of MS-DOS. Microsoft's effective marketing strategies helped promote MS-DOS and establish it as the go-to operating system for personal computers. These factors combined to create a perfect storm for MS-DOS's success, cementing its place in computing history and laying the foundation for Microsoft's dominance in the software industry. MS-DOS was used in a variety of ways, primarily as the operating system for personal computers. Users could run various applications by executing .exe and .com files. Popular software included word processors, spreadsheets, games and business applications. MS-DOS supported batch files which allowed users to automate repetitive tasks by executing a series of commands in sequence. Users could manage files on their disk using commands like copy, DEL, rename and move. Commands like CD, change directory, MD, make directory and RD, remove directory were used to navigate and organize the file system. MS-DOS used configuration files like config.sys and autoexec.bat to set up the system environment and automatically execute commands during system startup. Users could load device drivers to support hardware components such as printers, modems and network cards. The format command was used to prepare disks for use by creating a file system and tools like fdisk were used to create and manage disk partitions. Commands like chkdsk, check disk and scan disk were used to diagnose and repair disk errors. MS-DOS provided a platform for running various programming language including BASIC, Pascal, C and assembly language. Developers used tools like debuggers, text editors and integrated development environments, also known as IDEs, to write and test their code. 
MS-DOS could be used to connect to networks using network drivers and protocols. Early networking solutions included Novell Network and Microsoft LAN Manager. MS-DOS was a popular platform for gaming during the 1980s and early 1990s. Many classic games such as Doom, Prince of Persia and SimCity were developed specifically for MS-DOS. Businesses used MS-DOS to run office software such as word processors, e.g. WordPerfect, spreadsheets, e.g. Lotus123, and database management systems, e.g. DBase. MS-DOS was used in educational settings to run software for learning and training purposes, and it played a significant role in teaching basic computer literacy and programming skills. Users can also run various utility programs to perform tasks such as file compression, backup, and system diagnostics. These various uses made MS-DOS a versatile and widely adopted operating system during its heyday. It provided a foundation for many of the tasks and applications that we now take for granted in our modern operating systems. The legacy of MS-DOS continues to influence modern computing in several significant ways. MS-DOS introduced the concept of batch scripting, which is still used today for automating tasks in Windows environments, the file allocation table, FAT for short, file system developed for MS-DOS remains relevant. Variants like FAT32 and XFAT are widely used in USB drives, memory cards and other removable storage devices. Modern operating systems, including Windows, maintain compatibility with older MS-DOS file systems, ensuring data accessibility across generations of hardware. Many classic software applications and games originally developed for MS-DOS are still cherished today. Emulators like DOSBox allow users to run these programs on modern systems. The vibrant MS-DOS gaming era laid the foundation for today's gaming culture, with many iconic titles and franchises originating from that period. Windows involved from MS-DOS with early versions like Windows 1.0 to Windows 3.1, running on top of MS-DOS. The architecture and design principles influenced the development of later Windows operating systems alongside concepts like the boot process and command line utilities, which has also influenced the architecture of modern operating systems today. MS-DOS was a major factor in Microsoft's rise to dominance in the software industry. The revenue and experience gained from MS-DOS development were instrumental in funding and guiding subsequent projects. An open source version of MS-DOS called FreeDOS is still actively developed and used by enthusiasts and embedded systems who continue to explore and preserve MS-DOS systems today, contributing to the retro computing movement. MS-DOS's impact is still felt today, both in the enduring technologies it introduced and in the ways it shaped the direction of personal computing. It's a testament to how fundamental innovations can have a lasting legacy. MS-DOS played a pivotal role in the evolution of personal computing and had a lasting impact on the technology landscape. MS-DOS became the standard operating system for IBM PCs and compatible machines, creating a unified platform that facilitated software development and hardware compatibility. The widespread use of IBM PCs running MS-DOS established a common standard in the personal computer market, making it easier for users and businesses to adopt and use computers. MS-DOS introduced a text-based command line interface that allowed users to interact with the computer by typing commands. This method continued to influence modern command line tools and interfaces such as the Windows Command Prompt and PowerShell. The success of MS-DOS created a thriving ecosystem of third-party software developers who produced a wide range of applications from word processors to games. This fostered innovation and expanded the capabilities of personal computers. MS-DOS became the platform of choice for business applications, including accounting software, spreadsheets, and database management systems. This drove the adoption of computers in the corporate world. Concepts introduced in MS-DOS such as the boot process, device drivers, and system calls influenced the design and architecture of subsequent operating systems. MS-DOS introduced the concept of device drivers, which allowed hardware manufacturers to provide specific drivers for their devices, ensuring compatibility and ease of use. MS-DOS played a significant role in teaching early computer users about command line interfaces, file management and basic programming. 
This contributed to widespread computer literacy and laid the foundation for future technological advancements. MS-DOS was a popular platform for gaming, with many iconic titles and franchises originating during the MS-DOS era. This helped establish the personal computer as a viable gaming platform. As hardware capabilities improved, MS-DOS supported multimedia applications including early graphics, sound and video playback, paving the way for more advanced multimedia experiences. MS-DOS's impact on computing is profound and enduring. It not only shaped the early years of personal computing, but also laid the groundwork for many of the technological technologies and practices that we rely on today. So that brings us to the end of the episode talking about the history of MS-DOS. I hope you found it enjoyable and maybe learned something new. I've mentioned dates from 1981, 1993, 1995, 2000 and 2008. So if you are listening on Mixcloud, that's where the music selection has come from for this episode. Thank you for listening to the Computer Vault podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review on whichever platform you're listening on. And be sure to come back for our next episode, which will start to look at the first Windows GUI operating system. You can also check out my website at www.computervault.co.uk. Until then, leaving you with a quote from Pablo Picasso, Computers are useless, they can only give you answers. (laughs) 